Hello and welcome to Quick Bus Chatter. They generally say day three is the moving day. Well, it's moved completely in India's direction. They batted well at the front, they batted well at the end as well, but in between that, they bowled beautifully as well. And on that note, it's time to call in one Mr. Michael Wan. Yeah, DK, uh, moving day, uh, absolutely spot on. It's been a moving day for India in a, in a dramatic sense. Those last three wickets to get to uh, within 40 odd of uh, England's first innings uh, total was where the whole momentum swayed in the Test match. And then when it's giving you the chance to uh, get a ball in the hand and a smart move by Rohit Sharma to give uh, Ashwin the new ball to particularly Ben Duckett, who's uh, had a few problems uh, against him. Uh, this Indian side, it's happened for many, many years. It's... Uh, the hardest place to play in the world because uh, you, you give them a sniff in, in, in their own backyard in the conditions that they're so good at playing. And even when they've had a tricky uh, first two days, they suddenly do crept their way back in. They kept on just getting closer to England. Then suddenly they get the ball in hand. The ball starts to spin a bit more. Uh, Rowitz's captaincy was excellent. And this England batting lineup was under a huge amount of pressure. But again, England only managed to bat 54 overs. So they didn't give their bowlers enough chance to get <laughs> mentally and physically rest. And then they get uh, hit for 40 quite quickly at the back end of the day. But I have to give India a huge amount of credit. They do it regularly. That day three, uh, they sniff an opportunity. And Rohit Sharma and his team uh, just grabbed it brilliantly today. You know, there's plenty to speak about today because that's the kind of day this has been. But yesterday, you said something very interesting, Michael. You said on air that the game is still not over. There's a lot to go. And as soon as the show finished, when we're just about to go, you said, DK, I have a feeling if India can get close to 60, 70 runs of England's total, then, you know, England could get bundled out and then we could see uh, something very different of unfolding. How did you get that kind of a feel yesterday, Michael? Um, I, well, I, it's because it's watching India play in India. It uh, happens very quickly. Um, and, and, you know, with an England batting lineup that plays um, quite aggressively at times, but I don't think they've played as aggressively as they, they generally have over the last two years in this test match against the spinning ball. It, it's happened uh, quite a lot over many, many years. It's not just this England side. It's many touring teams that uh, go to India and suddenly you get blown away. Um, we see teams get blown away in Australia against the bounce. You see teams in uh, the UK against the Duke ball get blown away with the swing and the seam. Well, in India against Judasia, Kuldeep and uh, Ashwin, three incredible spinners. And in particular, Kuldeep Yadav, uh, the best compliment I can give him, DK, he, he bowled today like the left-arm version of our late great friend Shane Warne. He just got it whipping out of his hands. He got great drift, great control, great variations. And really, I mean, Ashwin got the start, but it was Kuldeep's arrival today that uh, suddenly triggered the, those quick wickets. And he had all the England players on toast. It was a brilliant spell of bowling. Great captaincy, getting Rowick. Uh, getting him on at the right time. He was underutilised in that first innings, only to bowl 12 overs to uh, allow England to get 3.53 and only 12 overs to be bowled by Kuldeep was uh, a real shock for me. But uh, yeah, he, he's been tremendous. He's got different run-ups now. He's clearly getting more experience, uh, better game after game. Uh, and he really was the instigator of that collapse from the England team. And, uh, you know, the Indian batting was a tale of two halves. First things first, the first half. They literally batted for a session, Michael. And that's not something we were expecting. We were expecting England to bowl them out very, very quickly. But Kuldeep and Dhruv Jurel batted beautifully. Dhruv Jurel, you know, his second knock in international cricket. You've been watching him consistently in terms of last test and this test and rather closely. And you seem to have liked him. Yeah, but I, I, I always look at a young player. You know, pretty much all the young players will have the attacking element of the game. It's the modern world. They all play T20 cricket and whack a ball. But... You know, I look at technique, you know, because I believe in test match cricket, if, if you don't have a technique, you're not going to survive against the better bowlers, uh, particularly when the pressure's on. And his technical side was tremendous. You know, he's got a real nice, solid technique. And and then obviously when he started to get down the back end of the innings, he started to hit those sixes down the ground and he manoeuvred the ball into the gaps. And to do that under a, a huge amount of pressure in his second game, when India, uh, now let's be honest, India arrived this morning, uh, they weren't favourites to win the game. England were clear favourites to win the match. And, um, from yesterday afternoon, when he had that partnership with Kuldi Yadav, he, he, he's gradually just got England, India back into the test match and uh, played beautifully. But I've got to ask you, I, I didn't realise Kuldi Yadav could bat. I mean, I knew he could bowl. But Kuldi Yadav's batting, DK, is, uh, it's been a, a little bit of a thorn in England's side over the, uh, the last two weeks. Look, I'm not surprised at all. And I say that only because he's always been someone who can defend the ball really well. 
the six hitting is not his strength he's someone who likes to defend the ball and that you could see he's played 131 balls to get his 28 very different to what baseball does but very effective must say in this partnership 76 and more than the runs it's about the time they played and kind of wore England out 202 balls they had to work really hard to get Kuldeep out and it is great to see in domestic cricket he's got 100 and it doesn't come easy as you would know in domestic cricket so the fact is that he has batting skill and he showed that when he went as a night watchman in Rajkot they, they couldn't get him out easily again in this test when he's got the opportunity he has shown that uh, he is able to bat I mean, generally, the 11 for some time has been two left-arm spinners where they play Jadija and Akshar. And Akshar is a proper batter who gives a lot at number nine. But it's good to see Kuldeep. We know what he can do with the ball. At number one, he can definitely bowl with a different variety, which is left-arm wrist spin. But most importantly, if he's able to contribute with the bat like this, it is a, a very, very healthy trend and a happy situation for Team India to be in. But what was really disappointing was how meek England were in the first session. I mean, they weren't able to get those three wickets. Not something that uh, you and I visualized yesterday so much, but any reasons you think? Oh, no, not really. I, I think this attack is uh, it, it, it's competed more than I thought it would do um, in, in Indian conditions. When you look at the inexperience of the spinners, uh, there's no real pace in this week's attack. You've got Ollie Robinson bowling around 78, 80 miles an hour. That, Hasn't had uh, you know that much success in Indian conditions. Uh, Jimmy Anderson at 41 years of age, again, not bowling express, but very, very skillful. Uh, that drop catch of uh, Ollie Robinson at mid-wicket, you, know, you, you look at the, the, the course of the whole series and you know, England have dropped some real key catches at uh, key moments in the Test match. If they took taken that, I think England would have had a, a lead of over 100. Um, they ended up with a lead of 40-odd, uh, but it was, it was the momentum and, and the mentality that India suddenly started to get stronger with because they were know they were getting closer. You could see that Ben Stokes started to, I'm not saying panic, but his body language changed just slightly. Uh, and then it was always going to be difficult once uh, India got quite close uh, to England's uh, first inning score when they went out to about second. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I can kind of point the finger at the England's bowling attack because it's so inexperienced. And, you know, they've done really well to put India under a huge amount of pressure throughout the series. But this is what India do. You used to do it, DK. It's uh, been a a historical trait of an Indian side at home that when they get a sniff, India's really good days are explosive days. You know, they blow teams away. Uh, England's really good days are good days. You know, that India know that if they come back the next day, they can kind of get the game back. Uh, it's these kind of days that India have that uh, just blow the opposition away. They did it last week on uh, day three uh, and they've done it again here on day three. The moving day, there's only one team moving and that's uh, that's, <laughs> that's that's been India over the last two weeks. True. And, but there was a silver lining. Shoaib Bashir, I thought he bowled beautifully. The, the consistency in length was great for us to see yesterday. A long spell today. He could have got his Pfeiffer when Dhruv Jurel was dropped by Ollie Robinson. But in the end, he managed to get it. I could see Graham Swan sitting next to me, literally spewing venom, venom and so upset when Ollie Robinson dropped that. He's like, what is he doing at mid-wicket? There should be someone else, etc., etc. But it is good to see him get that deserving five-wicket haul. We don't know, actually, when he goes back to England, whether he'll play domestic cricket. That's the beauty of the situation here. It's pretty much horses for courses policy. And as we have previously spoken on the show as to how Rob Key and the, and the rest of the England support staff think very different to the usual norms, but a great pick, someone who's defied odds in terms of how to get picked, but also a great journey. Started off with Surrey, moved to Middlesex, and then at the end found a way to uh, get into Somerset. Hasn't played too many games, but it was good to see him bowl so well against a good batting lineup. Now, if there was one uh, off-spinner who did well, I can tell you, there's another off-spinner who I reckon saw the show yesterday and he got pretty pissed off at you and me, uh, Michael, and uh, did uh, phenomenally well uh, today. Showed the world why he is uh, rated as one of the greatest off-spinners ever to have played the game. How good was he today? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't think we were too critical. It was just surprising that he's not had a five for in the series. And uh, obviously... Uh, he was always going to have a say at some stage. And we did say on the show that it, uh, it could come tomorrow, which is today, and it has arrived. He bowled uh, beautifully. I think bowling with a new ball really helps him because he's got that that, that underspinner that kind of skids on. Uh, the delivery that he got, uh, Oli Pope out first ball was a beauty. Just skidded on it. Bit surprised that Oli didn't realise that that's the kind of ball that would be coming. That's the kind of thought process that you need waiting to back, kind of understanding what uh, a bowler is delivering before you get out there. Uh, but Ashwin was always going to have a say at some stage. There was never in a million years he was going to go a full series without getting a Fifer. Uh, and the way that he bowled and that combination with Kuldeep Yadav, 
And I saw his interview asked afterwards, and, and he is a professor, he's a magician. Now, he said he started with the underspinners, he started to bowl a few kind of curveballs, and then he went to the other end and it was more spin, so he started to float it up a bit more and started to realise he could bowl more overspin deliveries. And to survive at Test Man, you mentioned Shahid Bashir has been tremendous, but for him to survive for uh, many, many years, you've got to keep adding to your kind of uh, skill sets. And, and that's what Rabbi Ashwin's done over many, many years. He's just keep adding different variations, different skill sets for the different conditions and the different players that you have to uh, bowl against. Uh, he's been tremendous. And, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to give you the credit, DK. It was your inspirational talk about him last night on the show uh, that, that gave him that uh, kind of pep talk to go and deliver his skills today. Yeah, I mean, to join Anil Kumble as the most number of five kid calls for an Indian is not an easy achievement. I don't know which bowler is going to be able to achieve that. I just hope someone comes. But what he's done here is truly remarkable. And kudos to that man. I also said yesterday that knowing him, he'd be thinking all night, what can I do? What can we do differently? I mean, imagine an Akash Deep who bowled so well in the first innings, didn't get an opportunity to bowl in the second innings. Shows how well the spinners bowl. It was just a very clinical display of high-quality bowling. Kuldeep Yadav, uh, you know, the less said uh, is unfair to him. I think he bowled phenomenally well. Even in that same interview that you spoke about, he gave credit to uh, Kuldeep Yadav saying he deserved that five wicket much more than me. That's how good he was. And uh, you, know, you put it beautifully. And it is time to, uh, you know, go into uh, a sensitive topic, so to say. England batting. You know, it has uh, not come good uh, in for, you know, a couple of innings now probably. And... Uh, there's been a lot of talk about how they play and what they do. But I have to say, uh, again, a pretty uh, meek display of uh, batsmanship from a good group of batters. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a worrying concern in, in these kind of conditions that they don't seem to play with control. As soon as there's, there's a little bit of uh, spin in the surface, they, they, they feel that the option is to go really aggressive. Uh, the, the one thing that you have to do in India is if you get in, you've got to make it count. You know, you look at the course of the whole series, many of the players on both teams have got lowish scores, but there's always been a standout 100 where it's been Yassiswi Jaiswal, Ali Pope, uh, Ben Duckett. And you look at Zach Crawley now, he's got consistent 50s. You know, and that's just not enough to win your test matches and to put the opposition under pressure. Zach Crawley's in on 60 playing well. All right, it's a good ball, it spins back, but it's his option of where he's trying to score against someone bowling left arm leg spin and it. You know, you've got you've got to think in the back of your mind that it might spin a lot. Um, so he makes a mistake and, you know, again, he gets to a nice 50. I look at his test match average, DK, of 31, and I watch the way that he bats. And consistently now, he, he looks pure against seam. He's got a good method against spin. And I keep looking at his average going, how are you averaging in only 31 test match cricket? He's such a better player than that. And whether it's his mindset, whether it's just he's uh, a little bit unfortunate, uh, only he knows the, the real answer to, to, to that because for England to be a really, really good team, uh, they're not going to beat the better teams by having individuals that just now and again play the most incredible innings. They've got to become more of a consistent batting lineup where uh, all of them become more consistent when the bowling's that, that, that high level, you know, the top of the draw standard of bowling. You've got to be really good about playing it. And uh, Zach Crawley in this innings once again showed a huge amount of skill, uh, great stroke play. Uh, but 60s don't win your test matches. And, and and I can't point the finger at too many that get low scores because when you're up against Ashwin, Kuldeep and Judeja, when you first go out there, it's tough. But when you get the 20, 30, Johnny Bairstow got the 30, then played a really poor shot straight after T. You're looking at that going, that shouldn't happen for someone that's played 99 test matches. So they're making errors when they get in, which is a, a concern. And uh, that's the reason why they're not getting the really big scores. Just how they are at, at, at the fall of the fifth wicket, almost every time they've been uh, around the 100, 150 mark, 125, 163, except Rajkot in the first innings, 265, five is acceptable. The rest of the matches, literally, they've been around the 150 mark and that's always going to be hard work if you lose most of your major batters before 150. Then it's always you're working on the rear guard action and hoping lower order batters contribute and that's never a sign of a confident batting unit. And now we move on to a very, very interesting topic, but that is going to be on the hot spot. Michael, apart from the BAFTA and the Oscars that's going to come up very soon, the most discussed topic and debated topic is DRS. Mm. Ben Stokes said that he doesn't like having the umpire's call rule. He feels that it should be out or not out. 
And uh, there's been plenty that's happening. Interestingly, this test match, eight of the calls in terms of umpire's call has gone England's way for the good and none towards India. But that's a different matter altogether. Your take on where DRS is and how umpire's call can be used. and Should it be there, in fact? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not too sure about umpire's call. I think it'd be um, quite a quick test match if everything was out or not out. Um, now, I'm now watching it from my sofa at home on television. So I, I, I'm getting, you know, what the viewers are and all the supporters out there are getting, which is quite interesting. Joe Roos dismissal today, you know, it's co- caused a huge amount of de- debate about was it pitching in line or wasn't it? You know, it goes upstairs, it goes into the truck. Now, I, what I, what I want to see is I want the viewer at home to get a better understanding of what happens. Now, I personally will put a camera in the truck so we can see exactly what goes on. So the umpires give it not out. Rohit Sharma says, right, I'm going to review that. Straight away, we have a camera in the truck and we can see exactly how it's operated, how DRS comes to that decision that Joe Root is then overturned from the umpire's decision on the field. It goes red, 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 and Joe's got to walk off. Because from what I saw at home, we didn't see a, a, enough in terms of replays. We didn't, obviously, we don't get exactly what goes on in the truck. You know, you've got to remember that the host broadcasts to decide upon um, what they're going to use. So in India, you're using Hawkeye. In Australia, we use Virtualize. So there's two different um, styles of technology. Uh, but I just want it, the transparency is very important for me because the great debate comes and on social media, it kicks off and people, oh, there's cheating going on. There's someone moving the lines. Well, you could just completely clarify that if you had a camera in the truck and it went straight in there and then whoever's operating the uh, the technology, and let's be honest, DK, whoever's operating the technology is more important than the umpires because the umpires make a decision and then you as a player or a captain can then review that decision. So it goes into the truck and it's down to the truck to come up with the solution of the decision. Now, we had a camera in there and again for transparency, and I'm not calling anybody cheats at all, but for transparency and integrity, the ICC should also have someone in there making sure that the system is being operated correctly. We all see it, and then it comes back onto the television, and then we at home see exactly how that decision was made. You'd stop all the fallout on social media. You'd stop all the trolls having to go at everybody. You'd stop people like me going, wait a minute, can you just uh, have a look at this? And I'm not too sure about that decision. I just think for slim simplicity, and also for those at home watching, I think it would be very, very good for the game if we had an absolute camera in there and it gives us the the, the kind of the whole process of what goes on, what angles they see, you know, what technology do they have in that truck that we don't see on the television, and why wouldn't they want the viewer at home to see exactly how they came to that decision? Uh, that's my feeling on it, DK. I've no idea where you think on it, but I just think transparency is very important in the game. You know, uh, I, I really like your suggestion and I hope everybody who's uh, important to uh, decision making in this regard is listening to this and uh, think if it's possible. I don't know logistically how tough it can be or what the what what the situation is as to why it can't be shown. There must be reasons. If there is no reason they, and it is a possibility, I think uh, it makes for very, very good viewing as well in terms of how interesting it could get to understand how they come to the conclusion of the decision, be it or umpire's call or be it given out. So I, I agree with that. That's one. Number two, uh, if you do away with the umpire's call, then, uh, you know, as you said, the matches uh, can get over very fast only because it's a projected path as soon as it hits the pad. So when it's projected, you're relying on technology and then you want to give the umpires an opportunity as well because you're just literally, a, it's an approximate path. It's not conclusive. Unlike in tennis where there's obviously lines and the, and you know exactly what is happening. It doesn't happen in cricket. It's a projected path and hence, the, the sense of, uh, of, what do you call it, the benefit of doubt to both the umpire and the batter, bowler, whoever mm-hmm. in that situation. So that's why it's there and I still think they need to hold on to that. Now, uh, moving on uh, to what can be uh, not the longest of days, I reckon, uh, because India have uh, done a bit of basketball with the bat and, uh, you know, gotten off in a hurry in eight overs. They seem to have got 40, just 152 more to go. But we'll speak about that on Fast Forward. Sitting here, Michael, I do get the feeling India are well in ahead in this game until something extraordinary happens. How do you look at it? Yeah, I, I think India are controlling the game. I'll say this, I, I don't think spin is going to bowl England out. I, I just can't see how an off spinner or a left arm spinner uh, spinning the ball can bowl an Indian side out for 150, which is uh, what England uh, needs to do. 
Uh, if there's plenty of low balls, and we've seen uh, quite a few over the course of the, the first three days, I think that's where England have a chance. You know, if they get two or three in the first half an hour that roll along the deck and bowl a couple of the players, get a couple traps in front. Of course, England can just get the jitters uh, going uh, amongst the Indian uh, batting lineup. But 150 odd. I mean, I, I think there's a, a clear stat that uh, India have been asked to uh, chase under 232 times uh, in India. Uh, they've never lost. <laughs> they, they've never lost. So um, I, I can't see it happening now. They've won 29 and they've drawn three uh, of those chases under 200. Uh, and I just thought today was the day that India just stamped their authority, uh, played brilliant cricket, not just skill-wise, but with their mentality. And I would be amazed if they don't get over the line tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I just joked on air saying this test match pitch has been a bit like Benjamin Button. It started off uh, really hard and just got easier to bat. So, uh, but, but that was a bit of a joke. It's not got easier to bat, but it's definitely not deteriorated as much as a lot of people thought. They were speaking about cracks and that opening up and how it's going to keep low. Uh, you know, if you do watch and observe the match closely, they went too much because of the wicket. Yes, the odd ball turned, some kept low. But you can see... The skill of Indian bowlers coming through, the intensity with which they played also coming through. And that's really helped India to be in a strong position. Not to forget Zuriel's knock, which has come out of consummate belief in his skill. And that was great to see. But Michael, we don't want you to jinx this Indian team. Let's just hope, fingers crossed, they get over the line in a comfortable manner. And that would mean they win the series. And going into what can be a really cold Dharamshala, they would like this result. And uh, it's been really good chatting to you and uh, I do think your suggestion on DRS is very, very interesting and I hope uh, people do have a view on it and, uh, you know, please let us know as well. Thank you so much, Michael, for your time and I'll uh, circle back to you, hopefully after a good result for India. Yeah, all I'll say is, DK, if England can manage to get the 10 wickets tomorrow, uh, I, I believe there's a bit of sleet in Dara Masala. <laughs> uh, if it's five degrees and sleet, that's going to suit the England side. So if they can get 10 wickets tomorrow, I think England will win the series in the snow up in the hills. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much for watching Cricket Chatter. Thank you.